This document provides evidence that the Neath Talbot Council has breached the Environmental Protection Act 1990 and has thereby placed the lives of Glynneath residents at risk from 2008 to date by not adhering to the Council's responsibilities relating to contaminated land as defined in the 2005 Neath Talbot Council Contaminated Land Strategy. This report has been commissioned by members of the East Glyneath Residents Against Contamination Group. The scope of the report is to verify the responsibilities and the actions of the Neath Talbot Council when contaminated land was reported to them as part of a Cuddy Group planning application in 2008 and to identify whether or not the Council have upheld these responsibilities. It has been prepared by Rugby Relics Limited, 66 Brynhavrid, Glyneath, Neath, SA11, 5BA. And this version is in draft form prior to publication. The report is being submitted to the members of Neath Talbot Council for the verification of information and the opportunity to provide counter evidence to the information and allegations made in this document. It should be noted that the personal opinions of Neath Talbot Council staff members and councillors will be ignored and discounted unless supported by the relevant evidence that supports these opinions. www.rugbyrelics.com The report was submitted to and received by the following Planning Committee members on the 7th of September 2020. Councillor Suzanne Pardison, Chair. Councillor Sean Percy, Vice Chair. Councillor Christopher John Jones. Councillor Dennis Keogh. Councillor Ridian Meisen. Councillor Scott Bamsey, Councillor Rosalind Davis, Councillor Steve K. Hunt, Councillor Annette Wingrave, Councillor Arwin N. Woolcock, Councillor Chris Williams, Councillor Suzanne Renkes, Councillor Mark Prothero, and the following East Glyneath County Councillors on the same date. Councillor Del Morgan. Councillor Simon Noyle. Firstly, we should refer to the purpose, vision and values of the Neath Talbot Council to establish a baseline for the actions and accountability of Neath Talbot Council staff and councillors. Our purpose Neath Talbot County Borough Council exists to serve and represent the interests of its citizens and communities. We strive to improve the economic, social, environmental and cultural well-being of all our people. Our vision We want our county borough to be a place where everyone has an equal chance to get on in life. A place where people want to live, learn and work and bring up their family. We want our beautiful natural environment and our rich cultural and industrial heritage to be appreciated and protected for many future generations to enjoy. We also want to pursue new and existing opportunities for economic growth so we can sustain our diverse communities for many years to come. Our values. We will stand up for our citizens and our communities, advocating for the needs and aspirations of our people in every aspect of our work. We will listen to our citizens, our workforce and our many partners 
and seek ways to meaningly involve people in our work. We will celebrate diversity in all its forms and work tirelessly for greater equality in all of our communities. We will conduct the work of the Council in an open and accessible way, ensuring we are properly accountable for the decisions we make. We will make the best use of all resources available to us. We will be open to challenge and will promote a culture of learning and innovation throughout our organisation. We will further strengthen the bonds of collaboration, working with others, including the voluntary, statutory and private sectors, to benefit our citizens and communities. And an extract from the Neath Potalbert Council staff code of conduct. Any breach of the Council's employee code of conduct is a potential disciplinary offence, which will be dealt with in accordance with the Council's disciplinary procedure, and which can lead to the dismissal of any employees concerned. A breach of the code may also constitute a criminal offence. The public is entitled to expect the highest standards of conduct from all employees of Neath Potalbert County Borough Council. The role of such employees is to serve the authority in providing advice, implementing its policies and delivering services to the local community. In performing their duties, they must act with integrity, honesty, impartiality and objectivity. The East Gleneath Residents Against Contamination Group are able to provide evidence that the Neath Potalbert Council have failed to observe the purpose, visions and every single value contained in the Neath Potalbert Council corporate plan. They are able to provide evidence that the staff code of conduct has been breached on many occasions. Documents containing these allegations are currently in preparation. Land south of Hillerglyn site history stroke background. Historically, the land south of Hillerglyn has been used for the last 80 plus years as a landfill site, both municipal and industrial. Long-term residents of the area always refer to the site as the ash tip because of the prominence of ash deposited there or plainly the tip. These residents include Maureen Llewellyn who was born in 1938 and has always lived in Woodland Park within 100 metres of the tip. She can remember the site as a tip during her childhood. Pam Thomas who has lived in Woodland Park since 1960. Jane Powell, who has lived in Brynhavrid for 51 years and whose uncle George Anton was a refuse collector at the tip in the early 1950s. Jennifer Woodward of Brynhavrid has lived overlooking the tip for the last 50 years. Ray Jones, Glynneath resident, whose father worked on the tip. Ray's father was the ash cart driver circa 1940 and Ray is of the opinion that Neath Rural District Council took over the tip about then. The land was sold and has been in private ownership for approximately 50 years. Planning permission for a housing development was first granted in 1989. The land was eventually acquired by the Cuddy Group Limited. The Cuddy Group used the tip for their main line of business, which was demolition and remediation, including asbestos removal. In 2003, the Cuddy Group submitted plans to build houses on the site. These plans were approved by Neath Potalba Council in 2005. Cuddy continued to tip on the site 
without consideration to any future development. In 2017, a residents' action group concerned about an Aberfan style tip looming above their houses successfully ended the cuddy tipping with the aid of local councillors. There is no evidence of groundwork for a housing development having taken place and there is no evidence that the Cuddy Group intended to build houses. The housing brand Primrose Homes set up by the Cuddy Group did not build a house during the entirety of its existence and it is generally accepted locally that the housing development proposed by Cuddy was a front for the illegal tipping of asbestos and toxic waste. Several residents have witnessed what they believe to be asbestos tipped on the site, while others have noted what they believe to be barrels of chemical waste on the site. The photographic evidence available supports this theory. Contaminated land identified and information submitted to Neath Potolba Council on the 26th of November 2008. In 2008, the Neath Potolba Council was informed that the land was contaminated. There is no evidence that this information was acted upon, which was a requirement of the 1990 Environmental Protection Act. The Cuddy Group attempted to meet Condition 17, Access Road Borehole Testing, imposed by the Council Planning Department. Part of the condition was that a geotechnical survey of the ground be submitted. A geotechnical and geo-environmental report was submitted to the Council Planning Department on the 26th of November 2008. This was prepared for More Night Limited by Terra Firma Wales Limited. The report found that of the six soil samples sent for chemical testing, four tested above the recognised safe levels for the presence of recognised contaminants. A source to receptor linkage was shown by the report, therefore the land was designated as contaminated by the surveyors who provided the Neath Potolba Council with this evidence and a suggested remediation strategy. Two of the contaminants were Grade 1 classified carcinogens, arsenic and benzoate pyrene. The remediation strategy also included, suggested, that an asbestos waste, waste removal licence be obtained. This information is contained in the illustration below, taken from the survey available in the Planning Department archives. The illustration provides evidence of contaminants and source to receptor pathways. It provided evidence of Category 1, or at least Category 2, contamination, showing a pathway from source to receptor. It shows the potential receptors, which included wildlife, plant life, construction workers, neighbouring residents, passers-by and future site residents. The site residents were also identified as potential receptors, brought into force UK Government Building Regulations, which required the remediation of the contaminated land. Application withdrawn, 2nd of April 2009. The above application was withdrawn on the 2nd of April 2009. No reason was given for his withdrawal, and the geotechnical and geoenvironmental report, or the contamination contained within it, was never referred to again in the planning process, which is still ongoing. Neath Potolba Council Responsibilities The Neath Potolba Council Planning Department was bound by law to pass on the contamination information to the contaminated land team at Neath Potolba Council. This they should have already done by the end of April 2009, because the Council has to abide by the Environmental Protection Act 1990 Part 2A. Council regulations for contaminated land in 2008 were contained in the 2005 Neath Potolba Council Contaminated Land Strategy. 
This document states that Part 2A of the Environmental Protection Act 1990 was introduced in Wales on the July the 1st, 2001. Until this time, there has been no strategic approach to the identification of contaminated land. Land contamination had always been addressed during redevelopment or when the risk has manifested itself. Since 2001, all local authorities have a duty to inspect their areas, locate and ensure the remediation of all statutory designated contaminated land. One of the key objectives of the Council strategy, Key Objective 4, is to ensure that the redevelopment of new sites, land contamination issues are dealt with effectively and at an early stage of the planning process. The focus element of this statement is that the document says that the contamination should have been dealt in the early stages of the planning process. One of the key objectives of the council strategy, key objective 4, is to ensure that during the redevelopment of new sites, land contamination issues are dealt with effectively and at an early stage of the planning process. If we refer again to the Environmental Protection Act 1990 Part 2A, Identification of Contaminated Land, the opening points of which are 1. Every local authority shall cause its area to be inspected from time to time for the purpose a. of identifying contaminated land and b. of enabling the authority to decide whether any such land is land which is required to be designated as a special site. The presence of benzoapyrene in the soil at above a safe level as identified by the Geotechnical and Geoenvironmental Report would indicate that the land is contaminated. If we look at the following examples of councils in England, both Reading and Slough, who have discovered benzoapyrene in soil within their authority, we will see that an above level of the contaminant benzoapyrene, with a source to receptor pathway included, is considered enough for these sites to be designated as contaminated and for the land to be referred to the Environment Agency. At this point in time, 2009, the Environment Agency was also the governing body for contaminated land in Wales, so a similar process should have been undertaken by the Neath Talbot Council. Slough Contamination this is an extensive document. This document can be found online at website address included. Reading contamination. This is an extensive document. This information can be found online at website address included. The Reading site in particular is of importance because the contamination could be considered to be of a similar nature to the Haler Glen site. The contamination at Haler Glen is not necessarily a modern one. The contamination at Reading was identified as most likely being from the tipping of domestic ash. If we refer back to the historical usage of the site, we will see that it was known as the ash tip and was at one time the local council tip. With coal fires being the predominant method of heating and possibly cooking in some cases in a coal mining area, it is probable that the majority of landfill at the site was domestic ash. The Reading document states that the contamination is considered more likely to be related to historical use of the site as allotments or possibly the previous use of the land as open ground at the rear of houses that may have been used for domestic ash disposal.
In a document dated 2009, dealing with contaminated land in England and Wales, to which the Neath Talbot Council contributed research material, the Environment Agency stated that the waste management and energy industries were often reported as causing contaminated land sites in England and Wales, other types of activities, for example the deposit of ash, was reported to cause contamination at the majority of contaminated land sites. For special sites, chemical and waste management industries are associated with causing contamination. The land had previously been an ash tip and as a tipping site for one of the world's largest demolition and waste management companies. As a contributor to the document, the Neath Talbot Council would have been aware that there were two indicators in place for contamination at the site. If we look again at the Neath Talbot Council's 2005 Contaminated Land Strategy, which was the document the planning department should have referred to for guidance on contamination, what should have happened is that the planning department should have passed the contamination information on to contaminated land team, the contaminated land team who should have then either informed the environment agency or worked with the planning department to formulate a remediation strategy. This is what the document says. When considering development proposals, the planning authority's role is to ensure that all material planning considerations, which can include the actual or possible presence of contamination, are satisfactorily addressed. When considering an application where contaminated land is involved, the planning authority will identify specific measures to be undertaken prior to redevelopment. These requirements will be imposed by a set of conditions attached to the planning commission. The main objective of the conditions is to ensure suitable investigation work is carried out and that the land is remediated to a standard that is suitable for the proposed end use. Page 36 of this document, which covers the planning process, states that sites that may be contaminated should be identified at the earliest stage of the planning process and then throughout the development stage and that there should be close liaison between the contaminated land officer and the planning officer. There is no evidence of any liaison between these two departments between 2008 and 2010 and the Neath Patalba Council refused to provide evidence of any liaison or of any actions relating to the contamination identified in the 2008 report. The overall aim of the contaminated land strategy in 2008 was to identify, remove and prevent significant harm occurring from contaminated land to people, property, animals and the environment. Page 15 Evidence of contaminated land. The geotechnical and geoenvironmental reports submitted by the Cuddy Group agent on the 26th of November 2008 included a pollutant linkage, source to pathway to receptor, from the site to construction workers, neighbouring residents and future site residents. This would indicate either a Category 1 probable significant harm or category 2 possible significant harm contamination which would require further testing and a remediation strategy. It should be noted that the maximum depth to which the contaminated land was tested was only 1.4 meters. The tip material at the site in some places goes down to approximately 20 meters at a conservative estimate. It is therefore highly likely that a far higher level of contaminants could be found at the lower levels of the site on the basis of its, of its historical use as an ash tip. The fact that the report included a remediation strategy and a validation report 
It's clear evidence the surveyors considered the level of contamination to be either Category 1 or Category 2. Figure 2.1, the illustration above, is from the Environment Agency's publication Using Science to Create a Better Place, updated technical background to the CLEAR model. It shows the potential exposure pathways for the migration of contamination from soil to human. The figure on the right showing a man working in the garden is particularly relevant to the Haloglin site. The land was found to be contaminated at points TP3, 5, 9 and 10. See illustration above with the majority of those points all being close to the edge of the development and near to local residence properties. In some instances, the contaminated land testing can be found less than 20 metres from a neighbouring property. The report advised that dust suppression and a boundary fence were necessary to keep the contaminants from affecting local residents. But since this report was withdrawn and the contamination left unremediated, dust and vapours have been regularly blown towards the houses of residents living next to the site while the Cuddy Group tipped industrial waste. This dust has affected the health of some residents, several of whom have asthma. There are also incidences of children born with mutations and young adults dying from cancer. Some of these young adults use the area of the site known locally as the bog as a play area during childhood. The figure below shows the direction of the groundwater flowing downhill toward the stream and wetlands area of the development site. Water in the bog would have flowed down from the tip material at the site and it is probable that this groundwater contained contaminants as identified in the 2008 survey. The illustration above shows the direction of groundwater which probably contained contaminants. This groundwater flowed downhill to Brynhavrid and Woodland Park and has also possibly contaminated home-grown produce. The illustration below shows an overview of the source pathway to receptor system. This appears in this document for information purposes only. The following image is an extract from the Neath Talbot Council 2005 Contaminated Land Strategy showing a similar path to receptor method of identifying contaminated land together with the Council's responsibilities. Text within image. This definition reflects the intended role of the Part 2A regime which is to enable the identification and remediation of land on which contamination is causing unacceptable risks to human health or the wider environment. Therefore, any land may be polluted, but unless it is causing significant harm or has potential to cause significant harm to a receptor as defined in the regulatory text, it may not be contaminated land. For a site to meet the definition of contaminated land, a significant pollutant linkage must be established. A significant pollutant linkage means a pollutant linkage, which forms the basis for a determination that a piece of land is contaminated. It consists of three parts. A source of contamination in or under the ground which has the potential to cause harm or to cause pollution of controlled waters. A pathway is one or more routes or means by or through which a receptor is a. b. 
being expo exposed to or affected by a contaminant or B could be so exposed or affected by a contaminant. A receptor of a type specified in the regulations, that is, human beings, controlled waters, property, ecological systems, etc. Source, the pathway to receptor. The, the local authority is the principal regulator and is responsible for preparing and publishing inspection strategies for the areas within 15 months of the date of implementation. Inspecting individual areas of land to determine whether any meet the statutory definition of contaminated land. Agreeing with the Environment Agency which areas of contaminated land should be designated as special sites. Enforcing remediation for those areas of contaminated land that are not designated as special sites and maintaining public remediation registers. The above image shows the Human Health Risk Assessment Source to Receptor Pathway supplied to the Neath Potalba Council in 2008. The suggested remediation of the capping of garden landscape areas for the site end users, future residents, is clear evidence of contaminated land. If we refer to the Environment Agency document dealing with contaminated land in England and Wales published in 2009, we will see a direct reference to this form of remediation on this type of land under Part 2 of the Environment Act. Under Part 2, remediating a site does not necessarily mean that the source of contamination has to be removed, for example, capping an old landfill. That a pollutant linkage from the source at Halo Glen site to human receptors, construction workers, future residents and neighbouring residents was identified places the c contamination as either Category 1, probable significant harm, or more likely Category 2, possible significant harm. The inclusion of this information in the geotechnical and geoenvironmental report provides evidence that the land should have either been remediated by the imposition of conditions, the polluter plays pays principle, or passed on to the Environment Agency for further testing to identify whether or not it is a special site. If we refer again to the Environmental Protection Act 1990, B. B. Of enabling the authority to decide whether any such land is land which is required to be designated as a special site. There is no evidence that the Neath Potalba Council investigated the contaminated land to decide whether or not it was a special site. Their failure to do so breaches this Act. What did happen? What is clear is that the Neath Potalba Council Planning Department colluded with the Cuddy Group to hide the contaminated land. This constituted a breach of the 1990 Environmental Protection Act and was done in a four-step process. This evidence can be found on the Neath Potalba Council Planning website. Step 1. Contamination information withdrawn. The planning application containing the contaminated land information was withdrawn on the 2nd of April 2009. No reason was given for its withdrawal. The geotechnical and geoenvironmental report or the contamination contained within it was never referred to again in the planning process until discovered by the East Glyneath Residents Against Contamination Group in March 2020. Step 2. New Agent Appointed by Cuddy In 2010, the Cuddy Group appointed a new agent, Asbury Planning, to submit new planning information. Step 3. 
land redefined. The plans previously be submitted in 2008 stated that historically there was no tip or industrial activity at the site. The 2008 application said the land had previously been open fields. The 2010 planning application submitted by the new agent redefined the land as a brownfield. This would suggest that any contamination at the site would have been dealt with. There is no evidence of the Neath Patalba Council Planning Department referencing the land as brownfield in any document. The definition of the land can be found in the local development plan where it is described as gently sloping. The Cuddy Group used the term brownfield in documents submitted to the planning department. The documents were accepted by the planning department and so they must clearly have been aware of the change in land status from open fields to brownfield. Step 4. Full conditions for the 2010 approval are included on the Neath Patalba Council planning website. If there was remediation to be done at the site in line with the contaminated land strategy, then it would be included as one of the conditions here. There is no mention of contaminated land, neither is there a mention of testing for contamination or of remediation of the identified contamination in the conditions. The contamination identified in the 2008 survey is now contained in the brownfield status. By allowing the Cuddy Group to redefine the land as brownfield, and by introducing changes to Condition 17, the changes allow the Cuddy Group to submit a new geotechnical survey. This was eventually submitted in 2016 without reference to the chemical testing. The survey was by a different company to that which undertook the 2008 survey. Allowing a new survey as part of the conditions without chemical testing also suggests that the planning department wanted the previous survey containing the contamination hidden. The changes to condition 17 allowing Cuddy to redefine the land as brownfield, the allowance of a new geotechnical survey and the failure to address the contaminated land through conditions provide evidence that the Neath Patalba Council planning department were working together with the Cuddy group to hide the contamination in order to bypass the remediation process. The result of the above four-step process was that the Neath Patalba Council Planning Department succeeded in hiding the fact that the land had been tested as contaminated until the East Glenith Residents Against Contamination Group discovered it in the planning archives in March 2020. These documents contained on the Neath Patalba Council's website provide clear evidence that the Neath Patalba Council received evidence that a source to receptor pathway existed at the Haleglin site and the land was defined as contaminated. The Neath Patalba Council failed to act on this information as required at the time by UK government law. Therefore, they have broken the Environmental Protection Act 1990 Part 2A B. Of enabling the authority to decide whether any such land is land which is required to be designated as a special site. The following members of Neath Patalba Council were made aware of this in April 2020 and they have attempted to avoid accountability or have committed misconduct, malpractice themselves in an attempt to cover up the identified malpractice. Steve Ball, Planning Development Manager. Kerry Morris, Head of Planning and Public Protection. Nicola Pierce, Director of Environment and Regeneration. Councillor Rob Jones, Council Leader. The following elected members of the County Council are aware of these allegations made to Neath Patalbert Council and are refusing to communicate with the residents group, whom they are elected to represent. 
or ask relevant questions on their behalf. Councillor Dale Morgan, Glyneath. Councillor Simon Noyle, Glyneath. This draft report has been compiled on behalf of East Glyneath Residents Against Contamination by David Richards, Director, Rugby Relics Limited. Supporting evidence for this report, further information and further evidence of corruption at the Neath Patorbet Council can be found by following the relevant links on the following website. www.walkaroundwales.com Thank you.